a lot of work to do. I have in my head a concept for my dream sewing room. I thought about making it a whole makeover video, but my studio right now is just in a state where I don't even wanna show you the whole thing because it's horrendous looking. I've been doing the thing where I know I'm gonna completely switch everything up and gut it so that I can paint, so I haven't been caring at all about keeping things organized and nice looking. So everything is absolutely everywhere. And so I think what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna just vlog the progress. Today, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day, maybe every day that I work on this, I'll make them little episodes and then show you the final product. A tip that I like to use either with cleaning or decorating or completely rehauling a space is a lot of times if it feels too overwhelming to look at the entire thing all at once, I like to just work in little sections. So today I think what I might do, I really am desperate to get some paint on the walls. I have a little bit of my walls painted just on either side of my door because I just wanted to see what the color would look like in different lighting. I don't really have a ton of prep work to do, so I think what I'm going to do is today behind me, I'm going to get this whole corner painted out. This corner of the studio is where I actually sew, and I think my thinking with this room is I want to have a very clear sewing zone that I can completely put away and have everything absolutely put away, have a spot for everything to be almost hidden when I'm not sewing because the nature of my life right now is I can go weeks without sewing and so I don't really like having the pressure to sew when I'm in this room because that's always what I've used it for. But now that I'm kind of diversifying and doing other things, I want to be able to come in here and feel like I can do whatever I want without any pressure to like keep producing pieces. So everything in this corner needs to be easily kind of tucked away. So if I can get these walls painted today, that will be ideal. I just need to move all of this stuff out into the middle of the room basically, and then we're good to go. I was thinking about patching all the holes in my walls, but I just don't know if I wanna even bother with this because I don't wanna wait for it to dry. If you're stressed out about moving a bunch of stuff out of a room for painting and keeping it organized and everything, treat it almost as if you're moving. I just have a bunch of cardboard boxes in here and I'm kind of making categories in them so I can move them out of the way. And then when I go to put all my stuff back, it's all kind of in their own little zones. I don't know if I'm gonna incorporate these anywhere into this room. They might go somewhere else but I thrifted these amazing brass, I don't know what you would call these. Are they considered finials? I don't know. But they go into the wall just like this and then you can see there's a section there to stick like a dowel or a curtain rod. I have been looking at some ways to store patterns like where they, I'll insert a picture, you kind of sew a rectangle with two channels in it. Oh, I guess I need two, two dowels then. Okay, that won't work. Well, never mind. I don't know what I'm doing with these, but they're very pretty. And they were $4 and they're brass, which is really, really good find. big into DIY and decorating and all of those things, you need to get yourself a set of dedicated paint clothes. If you don't have that, what are you doing? Sweatpants, sweatshirt, t-shirt, long sleeve t-shirt, tank top, shorts, your painting wardrobe.
exactly this discoloration is from. Could be anything, but this is just a little word of encouragement to you if you feel like, I just painted a few years ago, I don't need to paint again, it's a waste of time and energy. Walls get so dirty. Obviously you can wash your walls, but they just take so much weathering. I just personally don't think there's anything wrong ever with a fresh coat of paint. So even though I did like this pale blue sort of color, I'm just ready to clean the walls up more than anything. So it doesn't always have to be about completely rehauling your space. You could paint over with the exact same color. Things just get dirty, they get gross, they get stained, they get nicked. Fresh coat of paint is always a good idea. I know I said I didn't want to fill the holes in my wall, but I think I'm actually gonna do that. I need a paint roller. I have the fluffy part, but not the metal portion. So my mom is very kindly going to the hardware store down the street to get me that. And so then I thought, as long as I'm waiting for that, I might as well do the right thing and fill the nail holes. If I become too lazy to do it on all of the other walls, at least these two walls will be done. So let's do that now. If the thought of filling nail holes is intimidating to you, it is the easiest thing ever. This is dry decks. I think there's a lot of different products that you can use for filling holes. I know this isn't the right way to do it, but I've even heard of people filling them with toothpaste, <laughs> really anything that will just like solidify and dry. But this is super easy to use if you wanna just do it the right way. I just get a little bit on my finger and smooth it over the hole. And then you can wipe the excess off with your finger or use one of these thingies. I don't know what you call this, but it's like a building spatula. As you can see behind me, I had a lot more holes than I thought I did. So I'm very glad I covered these up. Now we just wait for these to dry and then go over any rough bits. A little bit of sandpaper and then we're completely ready to paint. Another thing I'm gonna do before I go in with the roller is I'm gonna clean the walls. I'm just gonna give them a wipe down. I got this new cleaner, which if you've watched a few of my videos where I talk about cleaning, you'll know. I am trying to convert myself to a non-messy person. And one of my favorite things about that process is buying new cleaning products. This is by Ecomax and it's a disinfecting all-purpose cleaner. It's orange scented mm, and it's really nice. So I actually just ended up wiping these down with paper towel instead of sanding them. It was just easier and it worked perfectly fine. So now I'm just gonna give the walls a quick wipe down because God knows I have not cleaned my walls in a very long time. So I'm gonna do that and then maybe second coat the edging before I roll it. Second coat, done. Still wet, so it looks a little bit patchy and weird, but I wanted to share a little budget tip. I don't know if actual paint stores do this, but I know department, I don't know what to call them. What do you call them? Like home improvement stores. This is from Home Depot. In their paint departments, if they miss tint something, they usually sell them off for like really reduced prices. And some Home Depots, like our local one, has a lot of mistakes, I guess. So I picked up this quart of paint for $3 the other day. See, it's like this really pretty celery green. It looks a little bit darker on camera. And it's a high gloss. This is actually for trim. 
but do I care? No, not at all. I just picked this up because I'm really, really loving these like celery, citrusy tones right now and $3, I mean, you can't beat that. So I just wanted to have this on hand in case I wanted to paint a piece of furniture this color. And I think actually what I'm gonna do is paint my cutting table because as you can see, it looks a lot worse off camera, but you can see all of this discoloration. I think it might be a mix of like fabric dyes and just fibers kind of getting into the paint. I don't know, and just general wear, but I only painted this a few months ago, so I'm not too happy with that, but at least I did do it in just a beige color. It's not really anything exciting, I just painted it because I had the paint. So I'm gonna try the green and see what that looks like. I'm just gonna paint it with the table sitting right in the middle of the room. Really debating if I wanna turn the camera around and show you what is going on behind you. Just in case you're mid DIY project or feeling bad about having any room in your house in absolute upheaval, upheaval, is that a word? I think so. Because of improvements that you're making, just remember it has to get really messy before it gets better most of the time. So this is what I'm looking at right now. So I think I'm just going to paint this table right in the middle of the room because I don't really have any other choice and this is the way that I do things. You just have to go with it. Good morning, day two of transforming this corner. Last night I got the second coat done on the cutting table and then I started painting another little piece that I'm going to slide under. I'll show you that in a minute. I think the plan for today is to try to get all these pieces done being painted. I'm done with the walls which is great um, and then put everything in place and kind of try to stage it and figure out the most functional way for me to sort of use the space. So. So this is the little piece that I'm kind of refinishing in the green. I actually found this on the side of the road and I think it's just such a fun, unique piece. It's solid wood. It's so heavy. It's a bit of a random piece because somebody, I think, was halfway through refinishing it. So I've never been able to do it justice until now because I've never bothered doing anything with it. And it's just kind of been a random piece that I've been storing in this room because I don't want to get rid of it, but I don't necessarily have a use for it yet. So I think I want to try to incorporate this into the design somehow. So I'm going to do it in the same color as the little sewing table that I have. And then when I'm not using the sewing table, I'm going to put it up against the wall. So this is going to be there and it's just going to slide right over this piece. I think that will work. Regardless, even if I put this in another room, I think that the green is just really charming. So I'm gonna start putting the second coat on this. I think it's gonna look really cute. So there you have it. I think this corner is completely done. Obviously things are gonna change and evolve as I kind of work in the space and see what I like, what I don't like. I'm always switching up little things, but generally I think that this concept is gonna work really well for me. I don't think I'm gonna go over too many specifics because I think I'm gonna do a complete tour of 
the room when it's done and kind of go more in detail for those of you who sew and have a room like this maybe make that its own video on my sewing organization specifically but generally speaking i'll just go over a few things i really like in spaces like this where i'm working and making things i like to have all of my implements kind of within reach and visible if they're tucked away i always am really satisfied with the organization of that in the moment but as i actually start working in the space i realize a lot of things i really enjoy having within easy reach and easily visible so it's important for me to have a really aesthetically pleasing way to kind of display any of the tools that i need to do what I want to do. So behind me I have this beautiful birch basket that I thrifted holding all of my scissors and rotary cutters. I have this wonderful iron hook that I love that's holding my antique tape measurers. I just thrifted this little cabinet recently and I have thread, seam rippers, bobbins in there and then I also hung these little planks up on the wall and they just have a whole bunch of markers, pens, pencils, things like that. I really love how this little green piece turned out. It ended up being the perfect size to tuck my sewing machine into, which I think is a great use for it. So that I don't feel the pressure every time I look at my machine, having it sitting out and thinking that I need to be producing things 24 seven because that's just how my mind works. So I like that it has its own dedicated home and it can be tucked away and not taunt me. <laughs> I also ended up having the perfect amount of room to place this clothing rack beside me. I don't know if this is gonna stay here, but I do kind of like it to be able to see what I have to work with. Lately, this is where I've been keeping mainly things that I'm using for quilting. So vintage sheets that I've been thrifting, quilts that are in progress. I've just really been enjoying being able to see all of that because my quilting brain recently has been just firing on all cylinders and so I'm really excited to use this space to produce some new things, learn new things, and having some fabric out and visible is really, really inspiring. So I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed the first episode of this little mini series making over my sewing room. If it inspired you at all, then please give it a like down below. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. And if any of this interior design, DIY, sewing, all of that interests you, then you can subscribe for lots more videos just like this one. And I'll see you back here next time.